Hey, my name's DJ Phillips. I'm from a band called The It City, and with me is our drummer, Derek Phillips. Hey, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> no relation uh, other than well, friendship. Well, maybe. Some relation. Like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Somewhere down the line, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's why we get that question a lot because of the last name and we're in a band together. It's like, is this a family band? It's like, yes. <laughs> family of friendship. And then we wrote one of the other songs from the last record we wrote with Jordan Phillips. So it was like three Phillipses, no relation. Yeah, exactly. And then Kylie <laughs> sang with, oh crap, I forgot about Kylie. Kylie sang live with us a few times. That's right. Yeah, four Phillipses. All I completely forgot. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, That's anyways, funny. so... This is uh, just a little uh, conversation. We wanted to talk about um, a song we're going to release, um, or by the time this came out, are releasing, have released, whatever. Um, it's a song called Carried Away, and we wrote it around a poem that you wrote, that Derek wrote. Um, um, and so we just wanted to get into a bit into the background of that, uh, that piece that you wrote and then kind of the, the elements that came forth that created the song. Um, so so and then because of the subject matter we'll probably get into some other shit uh That's true and why not who who isn't tired of talking about uh, dire situations right point? right um <laughs> you want to tell me so um just the the poem you wrote so uh it's called away with words do you want to mm -hmm. talk a little bit about like your process writing that so uh, maybe let's give a little context first. Um, I'll give my context and then you can give like from sure. the real perspective of the person who wrote it. Cause uh, for me, you know, like just a, a white person sitting at home, you know, just kind of seeing everything that's happening is a completely different perspective. Um, and to me, it was just all this stuff is going on and you're kind of watching in horror uh, on the, on your my you know the doom box my my telephone just scrolling and then i see your your amazing piece and so this was um uh, around the time of of george floyd uh, mm -hmm. murder uh and right, right and the the resulting protest and so yeah this is just a piece totally. so do you want to talk about like kind of where you were at and sure absolutely well i mean it it, it definitely been building to this because i mean three weeks prior to george floyd right. we had ahmaud aubrey and right. i and then and then even, and then I found out about a week later about Breonna Taylor, right? Which I had no idea. So that was like yeah. three months later that that happened. I'm just now finding out. So it definitely been building. So between those two incidents, I I felt something inside me. I'll just be honest. Rage. Right. I felt rage. I felt pain. I felt hurt. I felt all of these emotions, and they're definitely rising to the top, especially in the midst of our current state of being in a pandemic. Right. Right. So just on layer bond, <laughs> anguish yeah. and disappointment, frustration, all of that. So it just kind of escalated and, and culminated. And then when once George Floyd happened, it just I I just I get, I think it reached the fever pitch for me. Yeah. I mean kind that day so for a lot of people. It really yeah. did. I mean, so that was what Monday what was that uh, Memorial Day weekend. So that was Monday. That right. Friday, um just spending the next four days of watching videos commentary all of that digesting all that um it just got to a point where i had enough i remember distinctly that morning i just i felt it all over me when i was when i woke up and so like i need to do something positive with this because a lot of ideas that were coming to my mind were not very positive right. yeah. <laughs> and very self-serving and destructive so i wanted to avoid those obviously so i remember going to my garage we have kind of a makeshift gym so I, I worked out for about an hour. That didn't do it. Right. Um, my, my wife, she used to work out like USC workout. So she had some boxing gloves. I took some boxing gloves to start hitting the wall, mm. screaming, everything. I mean, I just, it, and it, it didn't satisfy that. It didn't, it didn't get me to a place where I felt some kind of, I mean, resolution is not even beyond a point, but just felt right. a place where I, some kind of peace or some kind of, where at least it, it could subside and I could, Cause it was, it, it overwhelmed me. I, I just, I still, I couldn't pass the point of being overwhelmed by the situation. And so I said, I just kept telling myself, I need to do something positive with this. And right. I just sat down and, and I, I literally opened up my laptop and I just started typing and I just started writing words. Um, the first thing that kind of hit me was I actually, I actually started a different poem, but it was a little too on the nose. 
and it was a little angrier and I was like, well, at least I got it out of my system. Right, and right. Then, and then, yeah, and then away with words just slowly kind of birthed itself. I, I It kind of started because I was, um, it's a play on a friend, a dear friend of mine who used to be a mentor of mine told me that I have a way with words, which is kind of, I feel it's kind of ironic because I'm the drummer. Usually I'm the one that says the least out of the band anyway. I'm usually by, in the furthest in the back. Right, and has, yeah. There's no way I can have anything exactly. to say to anybody. In your plexiglass yeah. stage. <laughs> exactly. Out of plexiglass yeah. surrounded by drums and cymbals. <laughs> like, there's no way. How could I even communicate to anybody other than hitting stuff? Right. So, but, um, so that's kind of what started. And then I thought about, you know, better ways to deal with this. And so that's kind of where the, the idea coming in. So I was thinking of, you know, there's there's other ways to deal with this situation. And that's what kept running through my mind the most is like all the other options that the police officers had when dealing with George Floyd that, right. di that did not have to result in a murder. A, a, honestly, a public lynching. And so that, and so that, again, so as I was, I was working through that in my mind, the words came out and talked about kind of the play on, the play on words about a way with words. Like I talked about right. me having a way with words as I'm writing a poem, but I wish we can use our words better. To, and then and also that spills into not only just those isolated in, incidents of, of people getting killed for no reason, but also how we deal with each other, right. just on social media or in person or how we vote. So it's, it's, uh, it, 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 it felt like it, it, and then after reading through it, it felt like it, it hit something in me where it was like, well, at least all the, the, the thoughts of, of destruction or just, or hate, honestly, hatred. I felt hate. Yeah. And I, yeah. I hated the fact that I was hating. And right. So at least that, that subsided and then it turned into something that I can, again, trying to use good, trying to use it for good. And so that's, that's how, that's how it was born. That's so, it's so inspiring because I think that, um, hate is rage and the hate are, are completely reasonable reactions. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. they're justified reactions, but they're also like, you have to use them in order for them to be by themselves. They're not helpful. You know what I mean? Right. They're, they're not constructive. Right. They're destructive by nature. And so you can, you can build them into something that is constructive, but you have to work really hard to do that, especially when you're clouded by these destructive emotions. And Seriously. whether Seriously. they're reasonable or not, you can't, you know, like it's completely reasonable to go outside and scream into the void, but that in and of itself doesn't, doesn't do anything Precisely. To move forward. And, you know, and, so, and it's, uh, on one hand, it's, it's so understandable that you're feeling it. On the other, it's really inspiring that you just, you, you kind of recognize that like, just sitting here and I don't know. He's saying just sitting here is already kind of stilted because it sounds like there's, there's something wrong with it and there's not, it's right. a reasonable reaction. And what, at some point you're exasperated and, you know, and, but you can, you can build it into something. And I think the, the process of writing is really, that's what's so exciting about it is because like in the process of writing it, you wrote something else that didn't work. And, mm -hmm. Um, even, and we'll get into a little bit of the music part of it more too, but um, like when I was trying to, I, I saw it and I wanted to, like at first I cried because it's amazing, just a fanboy for a second. It's it's a great <laughs> piece and, and Thank I, you, man. Thank it's really impressive, especially as someone who's known you for so long and known you more as, as a drummer and a person. And I haven't really seen that side of you uh, mm. as far as like art goes. I've, obviously mm. you, know, you, you can speak well and speak your mind and all that kind of stuff, but I, I've heard you do a poem before. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's awesome. And then just kind of feeling those emotions uh, from a completely different perspective of someone kind of like of a, of a position of privilege of, of kind of just wanting to see, seeing, you know, from a really basic level, seeing a friend in pain. And then, yeah. and like, mm. then you zoom out and you see, you see racism and you see systemic issues and you see all these things that are, they're harder to address. But the friend and oh, yeah. thing, it's like, I've been doing that my whole life. What do you do? You tell them you support them. Now that doesn't solve their problem, but it, 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 it lets them know that they're not alone. And that's, that's sort of from like, I don't know, it can, it can very quickly come into like, da, 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 like one car to the rescue, which, which I'm like yeah. very sensitive to not trying to do that because you know, we're all, you know, I'm part of the problem as much as I'm part of the solution. It, it depends on what you do with it. Right. You know, like it mm. always, when you wake up that day, are you going to close your eyes, which I'm guilty of a lot, or are you going to kind of speak up when you see something wrong? And yeah. when I see you like right now, I see 
I see a friend in pain and I said, what can I, what can I do? And it's like, well, the same as you is like, you know, you can punch things or I can call you and say, I got your back. Or you can, you can kind of do it through art, which is just something that as musicians, as artists that we have, it's like, yeah. sometimes I feel like it's the only tool in my toolbox, you know? And, yeah. uh, I don't consider myself an especially eloquent public speaker. I don't consider myself a great, well, you know, we're, you know, we like the things that I, but it's like, well, I can, I can try to make music out of it, you know? And Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of how we got to that part is I asked you if it was okay, if we, if we write something out of it. Yeah. Um, And you said, stop talking to me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said that was cool. And then I, it's similar to your writing, like the first draft d- didn't work. I had about three different versions of this. Mm. It also didn't, it just didn't work. And I mean, yeah. that's, I think maybe if you're a writer, you definitely know this, but people that aren't writers maybe don't know that you're seeing the end of a, of a sometimes really long process. Long you process, know? right. Sometimes it it is there is that movie magic of like you play something and it works and are you the first line that comes out of your of your piece works but right. more often than not you're like uh, I think it was uh, Tom Waits that described it like uh, carving from wood um, mm. like you you start with a block and the block is your your ideas and yeah. you don't just all of a sudden go there you have to carve it out and you have to like chisel and and I exactly. think that's that's true of writing too. Um, an exciting totally. thing for, for me as someone just writing in my garage, uh, the music portion of it, trying to, trying to uh, find a way to compliment what you're doing and highlight it. Cause I wanted it to feel like, like support for the piece that was already there. Yeah. Not like a, a remix or a covering up of, of, you know what I mean? Like, um, cause you can take something and sort of like pull it apart and do cool things with it. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, it was important yeah. to kind of preserve what it was but try to like build on it a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. And cool I think you definitely captured it. Definitely, man. Cause I mean, even just started nerd out musically, but the fact yeah. that you kept the verse wasn't set on a minor chord and right. then it went major on the course. And so there's, so I, I'm glad it had that because I wanted the balance of, of this despair and just this, this, uh, this anguish, but at the same time, leaving the door open for hope and resolution and, and, and progress. And so, I think musically you definitely captured that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. like I said, it, it's, it's a lot of trial and error to, to see. Yeah, totally. Totally. But, uh, exciting thing for me was I had recently not just, not to just do another plug within a plug, but, uh, I was using your Why beatbox. Not? I used the Derek Phillips beatbox. That is true. <laughs> I've, been writing, I've been writing with my friend Derek, even though he's not in the room. Um, right. which is exciting, especially in this time when we can't like get together and jam, uh, as easily. Totally. Um, and I appreciate that too. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I had I was finding different beats and uh, right. So I kind of got to write the music part with you or a beat that you made at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was pretty awesome. I don't know. Do you, do you want to give a quick quick plug about your beatbox while we're here? I mean, I mean as well, <laughs> might as well since since you brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. So those of you who are aspiring writers or whoever or ever or just like music hip-hop artists i did get to create this thing called the Derek phillips beatbox with a good friend of mine john estes who's a brilliant musician producer um and uh we just got together and i made a hundred different beats largely inspired by the music i grew up listening to and the music i love and uh, we added some just some percussion some one shots and um yeah so and it's really cheap it's only 50 bucks and you can by you can take me home with you like dj did and <laughs> write to my beats and use my beats and a lot of great artists who happen to be also good friends of mine have used it and done amazing things so just hearing what people produce after the fact has been just it it surpasses the what the publicity or the income whatever i get from it like that's that's the most satisfying thing is seeing my friends and people i know and care about and also honestly fans of use my beats to create something to create <laughs> art that's so it's nothing yeah so go to gumroad.com red red tape samples.com and uh yeah go get your one thanks <laughs> really they're really great too they're really dope for anybody that is uh they're fun. yeah once a, a another testimonial there's because they're i mean it's right up my alley because it's all like it's like there's a lot of like funk based stuff like um 
call it Stubblefield vibe and, and stuff. It's mm-hmm. not all, it's not all, it's like they're very different, which I like too. Cause I'm yeah. very kind of have a schizophrenic nature when I'm writing too. It's very like over here and then over there and then over there. And that, so it feeds into that while also like, sound like Derek Phillips, Derek Phillips in the pocket. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that, do you, I mean, how do you feel now? I mean, it's mo- it's months later um, when we're recording this. Um, to say that things are different in some ways and in other ways. In some ways. Uh, right. And how do you feel? Yeah, well, I try to be hopeful. So, like, seeing people out there protesting and um, and just allowing themselves to evolve and making conscious decisions to push forward so civil rights can, can be actually – um, continue to be realized and addressed. I think a lot of people think it stopped in the 60s. It, you know, it's sad to, to say that, and, and there's no discredit to these people, but what remarkable things were done with people like you know, Martin Luther King and Andrew Young and John Lewis, who we just lost this year, and Reverend right. Shuttlesworth. So as, as remarkable as they were, I think sometimes we look to them, we, we idolize them for the wrong reasons, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Like, we should be taking what they've done and as and thinking they're passing the baton to us and said and said, generally speaking, we tend to idolize them and go, well, no one can be that, so why even try? Right. I feel like it mm. de- it debilitates us instead of invigorate us, and it should be invigorating us and pushing forward. So it's good to see that there's some invigoration happening, that people are re-inspired, that that people are yeah. active, really taking advantage of their voice and their platform, and seeing and really stepping into their citizenry and knowing that this is part of what it is to be an American. I mean, right. just literally, literally this country was born off of protest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally. And so, and the downside is, is the law that this country is also born of taking advantage of people and systemic racism and injustice right. and, and corruption. <laughs> so, right. you know, we're, 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 yeah, we're on stolen land built by stolen people. There's just no way around that. We can't, no matter, no matter how far we get away, in a timeline that's still the impetus the seed from how this country was born yeah. and so the best way we can do if we really want to be great then the key is to realize that learn from that and build from that so we're not still connected to it unfortunately there's there's lines that still connect the dots to that i mean whether talking about mass incarceration redlining that happened back in the early ni- uh 20th century i mean there's just Oh, there's a long list of ways that this is continuing. Like slavery may not exist anymore, but there's still residue and and um, mutations of that the ideology mm-hmm. and how that was played out. And so, until we can really address that and 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 get to the heart of that fully, then I think I think we can pe- really become a people in a country that we we should be, we can be. So, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's frustrating to me. Um, when people try to kind of ignore your faults, like it, it, it's the same on a micro level as it is on a macro level, right? You can't, you can't move forward until you acknowledge the problems and you right. can't, you can't do that by just sort of ignoring or pretending that things are um, a way that they're not, that you weren't built on this sort of systemic oppression or, or that. And and I understand, I, I really do understand the rejection of that in the sense that it feels like an attack, like someone saying like, we built this, we built this country on stolen land. And so you're supposed to, what, what I it wasn't me. Am I supposed to feel guilty about exactly. that or whatever? And it was like, no, I'm just telling you a fact. You can feel however you exactly. want to feel about it. What are you going to do about it? And that's, that's, exactly. the, that's the thing that, that I try to weigh in, you know, like, even if I have those little things, cause you know, as someone who's trying to do what you think is right. If someone tells me I'm doing something wrong, it hurts. You know, it makes you go, I thought I was doing the right thing or whatever. And maybe it takes you a second to step back, get over your pride, get over the mm. the kind of embarrassment of doing something wrong or, or the, the pain of causing someone else pain or whatever yeah. and say, okay, well, what are you going to do from this moment forward? I think, I think it's key to do something and kind of piggyback of what you brought up earlier about, you know, what can I do um, as a white man? It's like, well, every, every revolution, every move of progress has been, that's had alliances. So right. I, I'm, I'm honored to call you an ally. And I think the simple fact that you are who you are and you 
and you're motivated to do something rather than nothing and just say, well, I'm not a racist and just being different. That's right. your, right. Because you're putting, literally putting your money where your mouth is. Right. I think we need people like you. And, um, and it's, and it's everybody's fight. This is not just black people's fight or just black men's fight. This is everyone's fight. Every, Good. anytime any human rights have been violated, it's everyone's problem. So we should all be active in those. So, so, and, and that's a tricky thing because I have to remind myself of that too. Yeah, just because I'm a black man doesn't mean I only fight for love the lives of black people who have been take, brutally taken away from them. I still got to care about the LBGT community. I still got to care about her human trafficking. I still got to care about voter suppression and, and um, voter fraud and, and corruption with corporations. I should care about all that because those are all human issues and they affect yeah. so many people in a, in a negative way. So what, at the very least, I have to care about those things. What I, if, again, that doesn't mean I have to take the weight and the burden of all of that and go, well, I haven't, I haven't given money to this, right. this, you know, this organization or I haven't done this. I haven't marched or I haven't this, I didn't stop buying this product or, so we have yeah. to also let ourselves off the hook, but I think the awareness and the, the desire to do something is, is great. And as long as we do something, I think yeah. that's the key. So. It's hard to, it, these are hard problems. You know what I mean? Oh it, yeah. It's, no it, doubt. When you, I mean, there are there are some some solutions that are simple, like you know, don't don't kill unarmed people when you arrest them. Um, but yeah. at the same time, it's like you can't pretend like policing is a simple issue. You know, uh, like oh, they're not. complex and and they're very uh, like you know, it's it policing is an issue that the the broad there are obviously broad stroke things that need to be addressed. Uh, right. Very desperately, but also it's policing is a local issue. So if if you know the city of Nashville where you live decides to defund police and the people support that, that's different than if you know Boston does it or whatever. It's you can't really oh, yeah. make that decision for everyone, and the citizens have to like take a good hard look in the mirror, and that's hard. Exactly. That's hard. Whether you're talking about who am I as a person or who are, who do we want to be as a society, and and those right. are the kind of things. I mean, if there's any you know, good that can come out of, out of, you know, horrible time. It's that, it's that growth. It's that you have to have these times of upheaval to, to really make real change. And that's what we can hope. Right. To us. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, that's why I was just thinking about how kind of a sidestep, but not totally that, you know, Jacob Blake in Ken, Ken, Kenosha, Wisconsin, just got a <laughs> hospital day. Thankfully he still has his life. So I'm, I'm yeah. curious exactly being just surviving that is all he needs to do for his rest of his life as far as i'm concerned but i am curious like what is what is his next step how is how is how is i mean he's already done more than enough because he was a victim and he survived it right but i'm curious like what what is he what is his next step again i'm not gonna hold him accountable i'm not gonna hold his feet to the fire but i am curious i'm just curious how that effect will happen i check someone's actually surviving what what will that do to the progress yeah. Of us actually treating other people as human beings, and it's yeah, policing is not an easy thing. And I got my brother in law is a police officer, right? And we've had a very in depth conversation about this, and we didn't see eye to eye on everything, and and I get it, but he he does. I mean, again, those those uh the split second decisions dealing with all that, and then you don't know what you're dealing with. There's so many layers to it. Like I just listened to um I don't know if you listened to um Malcolm Gladwell's Revisionist History, but mm -hmm. he had a great episode about a young man that was killed in, in uh, I think it was Albuquerque. And at first glance, you think all oh, police just shot another young Latino dude, right. thought he was a gangbanger. But when you get into the story and you find out he was mentally ill, mm -hmm. that he actually wanted to be killed, that he planned, it was premeditated to mm -hmm. lead to these steps. So the police, and, and then after this man was shot and killed, which is what he wanted, because he really wanted to commit suicide, one of the police officers broke down and cried for this man. So right. I think that's, 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 if we can fit that into the discussion as well, instead of just trying to pick a side, like saying this is a very, very layered, very nuanced situation. Every moment is, 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 a uh, is, 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 I mean, I'm thinking about every step that the police officer pulled over this guy, driving erratic, gets out of his car, pretends to grab a gun, but he's grabbing his phone, gets shot. And then does it again to make sure he gets killed. Like there's so many layers to that. So I think it's good for us all to come together. Um, a great example of coming together, understanding what people from, I hate to say both sides, but 
with a law enforcement side as well as the, I guess, public side. Um, what's happening in Camden, New Jersey? Like they have one of the highest crime rates for years, right. and I think over the past seven years, they've seen their crime rate go down by forty percent. How are they doing that? They defunded the police. That doesn't mean they took away all their money and got rid of the police. They started from scratch. They're like, let's scrap this and start over. They right. made all the police officers re-enlist, re-enroll, take classes, and whatever beat they cover, whatever territory they cover, they're a part of that community. They literally knock on, go door to door, knock on the door of every resident, and introduce themselves, and they know the police officers that that patrol that area on a first name basis and they're yeah. having events together they have cookouts there so i think that seems like a win win to me if, if, because the problem is i feel far too far too often the police officers may feel too entitled and too empowered because of their position not knowing they're citizens just like us and then conversely us particularly being black being black or being young whatever that is that we feel that you know, every time I get pulled over, I you do that check like, oh no, is this the time? Is this the time? Do I get do I get to be, you know, Philando Castile this time? Mm. And, and I literally think about that. I've been thinking about this stuff before I even knew their names. I mean, we were taught that as kids, as young my, me and my two older brothers, as young black men, be careful when you pull over to know what to do. Keep your hands attended to. Turn your radio down. Make sure you have your license. Don't raise your voice. Like those are all the things we're taught as kids right. when dealing with the police. So really, why is that? So I have to be subordinate to someone I don't know, as opposed to in Camden, New Jersey, where everyone's on equal footing and we're all still citizens. So I think if we can, and again, like you said, that may not happen in every community at Camden. I, 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 I hate to think that Camden, New Jersey is an isolated situation, but it's going to be different everywhere. But I think if we can take steps towards that, realizing we're all a part of the community, we all should care about each other and we should all recognize each other that will minimize this disability for certain people, law enforcement, take advantage of it and vice versa and certain people to be fearful of the law enforcement. So I think once we take that away, that would, yeah. it would, I mean, we see a lot of progress and a lot of people staying alive like Jacob Blake. Yeah. So. Well, and the hard, the hard thing is from the, you know, you get a lot of pushback from the, the policing community, which makes sense, law enforcement community, Mm -hmm. they're they're the target of of the demonstrations not you know, like and obviously especially at the um when you're talking about a protest situation like emotions are running high because that's why absolutely. they're happening. um absolutely but you have to recognize that as uh, the law enforcement side of things has to recognize that what they're doing isn't working before they mm -hmm. that change is is necessary so right. if you're like the mm. police and of course you know there's that is more nuanced than that phrase, you know, like it means more than just take all your money away. And of course right. you have to understand that. And then you have to say, well, why, why should I, you know, lose my X, Y, and Z, or why should my department lose this? Because blah, blah, blah. And you're like, because it's not working. And that's, yeah, that's exactly. the hard thing is like, if you don't recognize that part, if you don't acknowledge that part, then you're not willing to take those next steps. And so you just see people sort of like digging their heels in. And that's, I, I don't, I mean, it's just not, uh, it's not a recipe for success. <laughs> right. Totally. Um, no, totally. Man. Well, we got to wrap it up, but thank you so much for, uh, for having this conversation. And I think we pretty much solved it. <laughs> cool. Um, cool. Cool. So good song. job. I mean, I get, that was worth the time, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, you can <laughs> check out our song, uh, Carried Away by The It City, uh, based on the poem Away With Words by Monsieur Derek Phillips. Um, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> do, try to do something. Do something that you can do. Do something. Yeah, do something, do something <laughs> positive. Love on other people. Do something that you can in a special way to show that you care about people. And just, you need to keep injecting love in this situation because – we really show we care about it diffuses so much it diffuses so much so let's honestly care about people regardless of how they worship what they look like where they live how their voice sounds let's just love people it's really that it's really just that simple <laughs> it really is amen, amen. Carry it away, don't get, carry it away, carry it away, don't get.